I want to start with something I wrote in 1997. I actually did it as an act of desperation. I had taken over leadership of a project to refurbish a 50-year-old building for MLC in North Sydney. 12 storeys, 22,000 square metres, a um, thousand people. The problem was it had already been running for a year and it had produced more of the same. I thought it failed to represent the new generation in our workforce called Gen X. They had already designed the first MLC Enterprise Development Agreement and had done a lot of thinking about the future. I thought their voice was missing from the design. It was the beginning of my journey as a head of people and culture at that time to fully understand the power of place and the potential of technology to transform our lives. This is what my document said. I sat at home one morning, as I said, with my back to the wall, needing to get my thoughts together about what we needed to do differently. Um, I opened up my laptop and I started to type and I typed until I'd finished. Um, this was 1997, so this document's not new. Imagine. Imagine working with an organisation where your ability to influence the future is limited only by your own imagination. Working with a small team of smart, innovative people, doing things differently, looking for new ways to delight their customers, having fun, working hard, working smart, using all the advantages new technologies can provide to live and work differently, breaking the rules, creating new norms, and setting the pace for the new millennium. Imagine being on the payroll of an organisation, but working the way you would if you were working for yourself. Very customer focused to ensure you have a future, but making your own decisions about how, when, and where you'll work, based on need, not accepted practice. Sometimes from home, from a hotel in Singapore, from a customer's place, maybe on Sunday between 9 p.m. and midnight. Imagine working in a large organisation where everyone behaves as if they own the business, and they do. Where ideas flow and people are rewarded for sharing them. Where there is the opportunity to build something much bigger than you can dream of doing on your own. Where job descriptions don't get in the way of innovation and getting things done. Where people give you their time and their ideas without expecting anything more in return than the opportunity to learn new things and widen their own contact network. Where people know how to roll their sleeves up and get the job done and know how to have fun when it's finished. Where the job description, if it exists at all, is only the first and not the last word on your role. Where you don't actually have to be on the payroll to feel part of the group. Where you are trusted where you have access to all the information you need at any time and where you make the decision about what you should know. Where you are not expected to turn up automatically uh, to work at a set time each day. Where you are expected to deliver, are held accountable as much by your teammates as your leaders and are rewarded and recognised for doing so. Where you're not expected to wear a suit unless you're receiving a customer where you are given the opportunity to balance the drudgery that goes with every job with projects you feel passionate about. Where your colleagues understand that you have a life apart from work, where it's okay to keep your appointment at the gym most days, where it's okay to go early to collect a child when your partner's had to go interstate or is ill. Where you feel free to go when the work's done because you're always there when the chips are down where a myriad of different starting and finishing times reflect not only the pattern of customer needs, but also the needs employees have to meet commitments in their personal lives. Where it's expected that you will always be alert to opportunities to do things differently, to add value to everything you do, to exceed expectations customers have of you, to make life better for you and your colleagues where you are expected to identify the obstacles and solve the problems and others are willing to help, 
where you are encouraged to find the resources you need to help you do so, regardless of where they sit or what their email address is. Imagine never having to rely on job advertisements and employment agencies to find the next role. Imagine having a powerful network stretching through alliances across continents to help you find your way. Imagine a workplace where the only rule is that you're expected to take any decision in the context of what is right for the customers you've chosen to serve and with consideration for and the agreement of those who work with you. Where you and other members of your team have agreed with the organisation's leaders exactly what's expected of you, you receive real-time feedback on how you're going and together make most of the other decisions which affect you, how, when and where you'll do what you need to do where you and your colleagues make many of the decisions about who will come onto the team and who will go, and how the rewards will be shared. Where there are few rules and fewer policy manuals, and those that do exist are made largely by you and your colleagues and abandoned or changed as the new needs arise. Where it's possible to challenge all the old norms about employment and negotiate new ones collectively, called the Enterprise Development Agreement, or individually, mass customisation of employment conditions, where change is the norm and you welcome it. Imagine working with a company that allowed you to learn as fast as you wanted, <clears throat> sometimes with others gathered together in a room for training, sometimes over screens, accessed at your leisure, between customer phone calls, late at night at home, after work, but mostly on the job, being coached by those who know and see passing the baton as part of their job. Imagine working in the University of the Future rather than traipsing out at night to the University of Melbourne. Imagine never feeling you might be unemployable because your skills are obsolete. Imagine working in an organisation where you are never too young or too old to be given an opportunity to make a difference, where being different is likely to be seen as a strength, where you feel comfortable taking the initiative, where there are few barriers to spontaneity where you wake each day knowing that you are working for an organisation or federation of organisations which is proud of its Australian heritage, which can compete with best in class in the world, which each day spreads its influence like ripples in a pond across our region of the world and which you feel proud to be associated with. Imagine feeling, f finishing each day feeling energised with plenty of emotional energy left over for the people you love. Imagine coming when you need to, each day, or night, once a week, at weekends, occasionally, to a building which sits proudly in the community of North Sydney, which welcomes you in, which has a presence, which reassuringly acknowledges historical strength, but lights the way to the future, whose spaces alternately energise you and nurture you when you need time for concentrated work and reflection, which captures the spirit of a new generation highly IT literate, networked to the world, but at the same time is not alienating to those who want to continue to make their valued contribution without pursuing professional dreams any longer, in which you feel safe but not locked up, no matter what time of the day or night you are there, which breaks the rules for office development, which bears more resemblance to an airport in its functionality and efficiency and movement, sense of urgency and air of expectation, to a shopping centre, welcoming to the customer, selling people and their skills linked to the community, to a medium density housing project, grouping domestic neighbourhoods around shared leisure facilities, to a university, the front lawn, or here in Melbourne, the concrete lawn, for relaxing or convening large gatherings, the library for uninterrupted, concentrated work, the refectory for sustenance and exchange of ideas and access to intellectual mentors, theatres and byways and stairs, lecture theatres and tutorial rooms, maybe to a hotel, renting space and equipment as required for short stays, room service, rooms which convert from conferences to cocktail parties to training seminars to wedding receptions, different dining rooms and different bars, depending on your frame of mind. To a marketplace in Central Asia, to a trading floor, which acknowledges that sometimes people need to pull out of that noisy environment and chill out in a myriad of different ways. 
that understands that everyone has a moment when they need to retreat under personal stress, that we all have a need to make personal phone calls and have confidential discussions. Imagine a workplace which is highly efficient, high tech, and equally supportive of human needs, high touch, which acknowledges that even adults need to play, which is flexible enough to be reconfigured when the need arises, often, which supports the need for concentrated work and the need to gather with others, meeting celebrations, counselling and coaching, training announcements, team meetings, a quick break from the phones, a beer after work which supports a stable population of customer service consultants with dedicated space, as well as a French foreign legion of project workers for whom the need to form and disband quickly is the norm. Imagine a building which is capable of learning, of changing shape as often as the organisation does, which can quickly mirror new behaviours and help to shape their evolution, which gives individuals confidence to try new things a building which is capable of being adapted by its occupants, occupants, which signals our place in Asia and which, which could only be in Sydney. The organisation is lend -Lease Retail Financial Services. The building is MLC North Sydney, home base to over a thousand men, women and children, an urban community for the 21st century and it's dated October 1997.